place. Diversity is not a metric, not a statistic, or bottom line. It's just a way of being. So open up your eyes. soapbox, lobby governments and thrones. Time to face our biases, time to face our fears, time to raise our voices, institutions getting gear. A human is a human. My name is Charlena Russell. I'm a music teacher, multi-instrumentalist, and songwriter. My goal for this video is to provide insight to non-Indigenous people and lead by example. My heritage is Blackfoot, Cherokee, African American, Irish, and British. Because of this, I have a unique perspective to share. As a mixed race person, my identity isn't broken up into percentages. I'm 100% all of my ancestry simultaneously. I'm a whole and complete person. That said, in no way can I speak for anyone other than myself. I think it's important to acknowledge the privileges I've experienced because of my colonizer ancestors while I advocate for and raise awareness around the oppression that continues to affect me as a racialized person on Turtle Island. My hope is to help our community learn and heal. We need to accept that meaning well is not the same as doing well. I feel it's particularly difficult for non-Indigenous Canadians because there is a deep-rooted toxic positivity built into the fabric of our global self-identity. Because of this, 
Many Canadians struggle to want to go deeper than politeness, hockey, and maple syrup. This does us all a great disservice. We were all lied to, and the voices of Indigenous people were silenced. I'm thankful for artists like Janice Jolie, whose powerful art fiercely pushed me to continue dismantling my own internalized oppression and white supremacy. I will always have a deep respect and appreciation for her. It's possible to have BIPOC friends, family, and even children, and still say racist things that are hurtful. FYI, BIPOC stands for Black Indigenous People of Color. It doesn't make you an overt racist. It simply means you need to hear and believe the people who love you enough to try and call you in. It's like, Psst, hey, you have something embarrassing on your face. Except it's something ignorant and harmful coming out of your mouth. The good news is you can apologize, educate yourself, and do better to reduce the harm you cause in this world. I've always known that my white ancestors obviously caused harm to my black and indigenous ancestors. But I didn't know how direct that harm was. Lethbridge, Alberta was originally the territory of my Blackfoot ancestors. They lived, hunted, and thrived in that community as nomadic people who followed the buffalo, a sacred animal and life-sustaining resource. It's said that one of the first white women settlers is my great-great-great-grandmother. Now for many Canadians, a story of pilgrimage like this brings a great sense of pride. That's what we were taught to think. Well, for me, it's an acknowledgement of murder, genocide, grieving, and deep sadness. I have a deep awareness and painful understanding of how my ancestors were murdered and killed by my other ancestors. How they directly affected each other. How the buffalo were killed and our life source and food taken. I acknowledge that my white ancestors were the people who took those things and committed those crimes. I believe that it's very hard for most Canadians to accept the fact that our history is not full of polite, upstanding citizens. We weren't given the full story and our schools did not teach us the truth. The government silenced the cries of Indigenous people with gaslighting and further genocide with residential schools. The Indian Act was made to hinder and control Indigenous people. Not to mention our present day prison system and foster care system. It's not in the past. Our society is a colonial structure we all exist in and contribute to. Indigenous people still do not have clean drinking water, land back, and the 94 calls to action for truth and reconciliation have still not been honored. This is just the beginning of the work that needs to be done. We cannot look away and ignore our duty to stop the illegal injustices and genocide that are still being committed to this day. We learn so much from the earth and from the land, which is why it is so important to return autonomy over the land to indigenous people. To put an end to pipelines and corporate greed contaminating Turtle Island. Until these things happen, we are actually all contributing to colonialism as enablers, making us all colonizers. There was a time when my own white supremacy caused me to be extremely sensitive, and my white fragility caused me to take it personally. Trust me, the discomfort is a part of the growth. Unlearning isn't easy, but it is so worth it. Basically, if you think you don't have unlearning to do, you're lying to yourself because it's taught and internalized simply by existing in our society. If you're on this continent and you're not indigenous, you're trespassing or a descendant of colonizers who committed mass genocide. Either way, it's our responsibility to act now, educate, donate, protest, and advocate. Thanks for watching. Miigwech.
sleep. Probably the bear on the mountain. Good night. Okay. <clears throat> Pin? Pin? Uh, I don't think it's the bear. Pin? Pin? What? He's hibernating. It's probably your own snoring. Now be quiet so I can sleep. <sighs> okay. Phew. Chab! Can't you do something about your snoring? It wasn't me. Well then who was it? See? Oh! I know! It must be Vacuum. Vacuum always comes on Monday. He's noisy, but he'll go away soon. <sighs> okay. You. Pin. 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 Maybe it's something else. What else could it be? Maybe it's a monster. A monster? Yeah, a monster. Like the ones we hear about in the bedtime stories. The monsters that grow in dark places like closets and basements and under beds. They're hairy and have sharp teeth and eyes that glow in the dark. They grab you by the ankle and drag you into the darkness, never to be seen again. Jab, have you actually seen a monster? No. Have you ever heard one? No. Then how do you know what you heard was a monster? How do you know it wasn't? Because... Because I'm not silly. Well... We could check out on the bed to be sure. You check. Okay, but will you hold my hand? Fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Is there a monster? <laughs> But you just said... 
red monster's eyes glow in the dark. Well, what if it's asleep and its eyes are closed? Really, Jab? I didn't see vacuum either. It has to be vacuum. Why? It just has to be. <sighs> if we had a light, we could see for sure. There is only one light. <gasps> Under the mountain. If I were you, I would forget about it. But we need that light. No, you don't. There's nothing to see except vacuum. Besides, the bear lives on the mountain. If you try to get the light, it's going to be the bear that eats you. Well, he's hibernating. I'm... Sure, I could get under the mountain without him noticing. Oh, you think so, do you? Do you know how many times I've tried to climb the mountain? Each time, the bear has thrown me off. Yeah, I don't think that was the bear. I believe the mountain may be unstable. Nope, it was the bear. But if you want to risk your life, go ahead. I'm staying right here. So much noise, or that bear won't be hibernating anymore. Jen! What? 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 Shh. Oh. Shh. Sorry. It's just that I'm trying to dig under the mountain. What? Dig? Don't dig under the mountain. But I have to get to the light. They're big! Don't you know anything about how mountains are built? Built? I thought they were a naturally occurring phenomenon. Jab, mountains are rocks piled on top of each <sighs> other. If you dig underneath them, the rocks fall. And then the bear falls with them. And then the bear gets mad and eats us. Is that what you want? No! Then stop digging! But... But... We need that light! <laughs> stop, 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 stop! Okay, okay. I will help you get the light. <gasps> Under three conditions. One! You stop digging right now. You be quiet. And three, you do exactly what I say. Now, hold still until I get over there. Okay? Okay. Okay. Now, there is only one way that I can think of to get the light from underneath the mountain without waking up the bear. Okay, okay, okay. We are going to have to lift up the whole mountain one piece very, very carefully. How do we do that? You lift, I'll get the light. I can't lift by myself. You're gonna fall off the cliff. I know, I know. Ah! Okay, just stop moving. Okay, okay. Okay. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Job. Okay. Okay. Fine. We will lift together. Okay. okay. But someone's going to have to hold it up while you get the light.
don't worry. I have a plan. Okay. Okay. Now. Come on. Just sit down. Sit down. Okay. Sit. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. 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 One, two, three. Lift. <laughs> Ready to prop up the mountain? With what? You. Hey, hold on. Ow. Hold on. Ow. Hold on. Ah, uh, that's my foot. Well, Ow. move your foot while I get the Ow. light. Stop making so much noise. <laughs> Can I stop? Ah. Okay, I've almost got it. Come on. No! with the bear? We can't leave it here. Well, I'm not going near it. But we can't leave it here. He's, he's hibernating. What happens if he wakes up? Oh, well, fine. Let's, you move it. Uh, well, why don't we move him together? Fine, we'll move him together. Okay. Uh. Good, good, good. Yeah. Huh. Move. Yeah. Phew. <sighs> we have the light. Ugh. Don't you want to see under the bed? Uh. Come on, Pan. No, I'm done. <sighs> well, fine. I'm going to go have a look. <coughs> Hello? Hello? Monster? <coughs> off of 
of something. But you saw it's glowing eyes. Uh, that was the shiny object. What about the roar? Creaking floorboards. What about its teeth? Uh, light reflecting from underneath floorboards. I don't think so. I think it was a monster. It wasn't a monster, and you can't prove it. Yes, I can. I'll trap it. <laughs> It's my monster trap. You're going to trap the monster in a book. Yep. I'm going to lure it with these rumble flowers I found in the toy chest. Rumble flowers? Yeah. Monsters love to eat them. I heard that in the bedtime stories. So the monster is going to follow the rumble flowers and... Yeah. All the way under the book. And then, once it's under the book, I pull the string, which will pull the pencil, and then the book will slam shut on the monster. So then there'll be a monster sticking out of the end of the book. Uh, yep, uh-huh. And then what? Ah, well, then we'll study the monster, and we'll determine what kind of monster it is. Then we'll be able to determine if we need to defeat it, or make friends with it, or make it into something else, or, you know... Make friends with a monster? Well, yeah, or you could tame it, or keep it as a pet. Really depends on what kind of monster you have. Jab, you ran away as soon as you saw its glowing eyes. Now you want to make friends with it? Well, only if it's the right kind of monster. And if it's not, it might want to eat us? Well, that's why we'll keep it trapped in the book. Don't worry, the storybooks will tell us what to do with any mean monsters. And, um, what if it eats us while we're studying it? But that's why we keep it in the book. Jeff, if I trapped you in a book, wouldn't that make you mad? Uh... Yeah, and probably. And you want to trap a monster with teeth in a book. Nice or not, it's going to want to eat us. Then what are you going to do? Well, I don't... Hey, what do you care anyway? You still don't even think it's a monster. Oh. <laughs> Fine. Go ahead and build your trap. Did you catch anything yet? No. Did you? No. Nope. This is taking too long. Maybe that's because you don't have anything to catch. You don't have anything to catch either. Of course I do. I'm fishing. Fish are real.
didn't. <laughs> it's not nice. Hmm. I think I heard something. <gasps> wow, really? Uh. <coughs> what is it? Man! What is it? Anything yet? <sighs> Not yet. How about you? Trap is gone. You mean it fell over? I don't see it. It's really gone. <sighs> Ooh. Maybe the monster ate it. <laughs> the monster! It ain't oh. me! <sighs> Pin? Pin? I Pin? think I'm dead, Jeb. Uh, but you're still talking. It ate me! I was in its belly and then it spit me back up. 
Now do you believe me? Never mind that. You have to save me. How do I do that? I don't know. You're the monster expert. How do they deal with this kind of monster in the bedtime stories? Oh, well, um, oh, uh, sometimes they make friends with it. It ain't me. It is not the friendly type. Oh, well, then, um, uh, I guess we'll have to defeat it. Oh, oh great. How do you do that? Well, I don't know. I haven't had time to do research yet. I need to find a storybook. We don't have time for that. Uh, uh, you must remember some of the stories that you read. Oh, okay, okay. Um, sometimes a brave warrior comes and saves the day. I don't see one of those, do you? Uh, no. Um, oh, oh, there was a story where they used a shrinking zapper to shrink the monster. Where exactly do you get those? Uh, in the toy chest? There's no shrinking zapper in the toy chest. There could be. Jeff! Uh, okay, fine. Um, uh, oh, oh, we could transform it into something else. Did you become a magician while I was in the monster's digestive system? No. Then how exactly are you going to transform uh, it? I don't know. You asked what they did in the bedtime story. Well, forget the bedtime stories. No. Wait. In the stories, the characters have something they use against the monster. Something about them they can use to defeat the monster. The only thing we have is that the monster wants to eat us. <gasps> Great! How do we use that? Uh, I let the monster eat you, then maybe it will be too full to eat me? Pan! Jeb! Okay, fine. Why don't we eat the monster? What? Okay, maybe not us. Something bigger, something like the bear. The bear wants to eat us too. Oh, okay, then not that. Something else, something like um, <gasps> the vacuum. Great. So I'll call vacuum. Oh, uh, yeah. And then uh, vacuum will go under the bed and call the monster, and then. You be bait! No! You be bait! I have already been eaten once! Oh, come on. It's your turn! But come but, on! Uh, go under the bed. Go, 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 go! Seriously? Come on! Get the get back get come on, get the monster to come out here and I will call vacuum. Okay? Crab? Dab. 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 Vacuum! Vacuum! Vacuum? Dab. 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 Does this mean vacuum comes on Wednesdays now?
It's funny how the first version is the one that's remembered. It doesn't matter if it's the truth or uh, entirely fabricated or a little bit of column A and column B. Whichever one gets out first is normally the one that you're inclined to believe. They detained me. By the time I got to tell anybody, nobody would believe me. It's not right. None of this is right. So I'm gonna tell you what happened. You can believe me if you want to or not, I don't care. I'll admit I'm not an angel. I never was an angel. But what I did was totally justified. You ever been hungry? <laughs> like, not you've only had coffee for breakfast and you're trying to make it to lunchtime without passing out. No, I mean genuinely starving, hallucinatory levels of hunger. Like you haven't eaten in five days and even then you had like half a donut that you found in the garbage, which made you sick because you didn't eat for two days before that. That kind of hunger. And you don't have a place to sleep. You just have the grass, which is fine in the summer. Yeah, in the summer you can just forget who you are. But when that autumn chill comes in, and it's rainy all the time, and the frost is about to come, the grass loses its appeal. I'll confess to this right now. <laughs> they thought that I randomly targeted them. I knew them. Even if they didn't know me, and, and I don't know if they genuinely didn't know me or if they were saying that for their own reasons. I don't know which is worse. Do you know who I am? Do you recognize me? Did you know who I was before I broke into your house? Before I stole from you? Did I exist for you? Or was I just some shadow on the street that didn't even register because we're like totally different species, aren't we? It was a few weeks ago. I had just found a new spot, but it's in a high traffic area. And that's when I first saw them. They always passed me in the morning in the same direction and then back the other way later on in the day. The father, the mother, and the kid. <laughs> And this is why I know that they were lying when they said they didn't recognize me. The mom always gave me this dirty look like, how dare I be this unfilthy person on her lovely way to wherever the hell they were going. The father didn't make eye contact, but the one day that he did, he snarled at me like, like he bared his teeth. And that was terrifying. But worst of all was the kid. He wasn't above laughing and spitting at me. You know, he used to take the coins out of my hat and a couple times he kicked me. But I didn't do anything. I didn't fight back. What was the point? With his mom that close to me? You know what kind of trouble that can cause. So one day on their way to wherever they were going, I followed them. I don't think that they knew I was there. I, I don't think so, but I followed them into the woods and they came to this beautiful clearing where there are huge houses on acres of land and it was nice. It was really nice. And that's when I noticed that the upstairs window was open. And I thought, as I was leaving to go find a bed, what if they leave that window open all the time? That was my end. So the next day, they passed me at my spot and I waited for them and then I booted it into the forest. <laughs> and sure enough, there at their cottage, their freaking mansion, the window was open. I don't know how I got up there. There was a tree and somehow I must have channeled my inner squirrel or something but I got up that tree and onto the roof and through that window. It was insane. I had no idea that bears could amass that much wealth. 
I guess if you're gonna hibernate that much of a year, you want it to be a nice place. I get this. So the window took me into a bathroom. There's a bear shitting in the woods joke there somewhere. I just can't find it. <laughs> but anyways, so I'm starving as usual. So I make it my way down to the kitchen. And there's their half-eaten breakfast. Bears eat porridge. I mean, who knew? <laughs> It was disgusting, the amount of waste that they left sitting there. And there were two big bowls, and so I tried them all. And one of the bowls was too hot, and one of those bowls was too cold. Like, how does that even happen? The pot was on the stove. Did they heat up? Did the father use a microwave? Do bears use microwaves? Uh, is that racist? Anyway, there was a third bowl that was smaller, and it was warm, and it had milk, so good. So I ate it all. I think maybe it was a little bit yummier just because I knew that it belonged to that jackwad of a kid of theirs. <laughs> they had nice furniture. When I say nice furniture, I mean like it was nice looking. Thank you. The big chair, the dad's, was so hard. I'm. Might as well have been sitting on concrete with my back against a wall. I mean, not totally out of my realm, so. But I need a little bit something more. The medium-sized chair, the mommy bears, was like made of cotton candy or something. No lumber support whatsoever. And, and again, I need something, a little bit more support, you know? So again, it was the kids that was the best. It was a cute little easy rocking chair, which, yes, was broken when I left, but I mean, come on, what kind of chair can support a small bear, but not a normal sized human being? Now, I'm not suggesting that the evidence was tampered with at all, but, I, okay, totally, it, I'm totally suggesting that, but I'd like to see them prove that I did anything to that chair. After failing, obviously miserably, with sitting, I went upstairs. There were two bedrooms. I mean, that's nuts. It was a three-occupant home with three bedrooms? Why do they need this? So I went into the first room, the father bear's bedroom. It was scary as fuck. He had this painting of a guy a human being in full colonial hunting gear. I kid you not, with literally one of those big ass hunting rifles. I mean, I'm surprised that I didn't see a stuffed human head hanging on the wall. Maybe if I went in the basement or something, I don't know. But the bed was hard, like concrete. I mean, I should have known that Papa Bear liked his things a certain way. Mama Bear's room was creepy, like in a Stepford Wives kind of way. I swear her bed was stuffed with just down. It was like lying on clouds, which I guess would be nice for some people, but again, I need a little bit of support. Come on. Baby Bear's room was fine. There was no decoration. It was more like, like a hotel room or a hospital room. The bed was perfect. You know what happened next? Well, you do. You've heard it. Imagine not sleeping in a proper bed for six months and what cool, soft sheets feel like on your skin and having a full belly for the first time in so long and, and you'll know why I fell asleep for eight hours. And then I woke up to screams and snarls and being attacked by animals. Animals is what did this to me. They were animals. I also might have pocketed a bit of Mama Bear's jewelry. I, I mean, in all fairness, what does a bear need with earrings and a gold necklace? I mean, come on. Look at me. They did this to me. They found me in their home. Is this justified? 
You tell me. All I wanted was a place to sleep and some food to eat. And their snarling little kid spat at me for weeks. So I ate his porridge. All I wanted was a warm meal. And now I'm the one that's being punished. I can't, I can't afford a lawyer. I don't even have a fixed address. What was I supposed to do? It wasn't legal. But I can't go with legal. Was it justified? It wasn't right. I know it wasn't right. But it was just right. of the East, be here now. Powers of the West, be here now.
You know these roads. Here at the crossroads where Hecate's hounds howl at night. A supper on her altar. A placation, an offering to the goddess at the darkening moon. The moon waxes waning. The way home is through the cave. Inwards into the darkness. Hear your cells transmute, cell by cell, like her supper decomposing on the altar. So you eat sparingly, with caution, measuring every morsel that enters your mouth because it will transform you. It will. Truly, it will. So to the stars that enter the vacant interstellar places, promising you your destiny, and so your eyes drink in their darkness, the bulks in your mouth. say may arrive before you arrive time may come before it comes oh blessed night where is your mystery I blind Tiresias seer and prophet let me hear your oracle. Odysseus, grant me your sureness with arrow and bow. As I shun Cyclops over waned appetite, let Pelops serve me up dismembered to the gods. Let the gods feast upon my eyes, my fingers, my bones, that my body may atone for my transgressions. My goddess, why have you forsaken me? Hecate, hear my cries as you heard hers. For I am like Persephone, abducted into Hades' shades. I too have eaten pomegranate seed, corrupted her sacred fruit. I am lost. I am lost to the infernal compass that has measured our every shore. Cave and mountain in numbers foreign and fanciful. All length, depth and height that philosophers have petrified into monoliths and eminent men of letters tamed for their personal heroism. I am writing blindly. I am writing in this gloomy silence. As I am writing on these stony walls, my fingers trace the craggy contours, the outline of all your stories coming before and after me. I am writing to you, queen of all that is unheard, unseen, and unsaid. To you, veiled sister, ancient hag, whose laws upheld the Nile, eternally fertile and green, whose torches blessed each seedling beneath dark, loamy earth. Tribal grandmother of the underworld, be the magnet for my compass, and like the tuning fork that tones, tone, vibrate unmind ferrous forms. shaping them into signs, ciphering all the stories of my unknown existence.
fell me a path, like Gretel's trail, lit sublunary yet true. I come with shivering hand into the labyrinth. O Holy One, crone of the blessed crossroads, lead me. Lead me. Take me home. Oh, come from the car.